seems like something we should do. Welcome, hello, welcome to uh, the package monthly Think Big session. Uh, this is our chance to talk about different ideas that are for uh, product ideas and workflow ideas for the team um, in a longer horizon, a longer timeline. Uh, we'll be going through the agenda that's in the meeting doc. And I think, uh, Ian, you have the first item. I do. Uh, so I wanted to kick off today's uh, Think Big to go over some of the research we've been doing. Um, if you notice, Tim and I have made some notes about jobs to be done related research. Um, so I wanted to kind of lay that out for everyone. What we're trying to work on is getting an understanding from our users what uh, tasks they need to complete when, re when thinking of package and the registries um, in order to fully utilize it. We're framing it off the question, what jobs does it take to migrate from your current third party solution? Um, and so this is trying to figure out from users what is most important and what isn't. So to help us prioritize as we are kind of on the landscape of new features that we could work on. Um, you can take a look at the research issue to see how we're doing it. Um, but at the high level, we're basically splitting it into two different pieces, each piece having an internal and an external component. So four in total. Um, so we're doing a survey, which is basically just, here's all the jobs to be done and the tasks related. Could you rate them? And this is the quantitative. Uh, sorry, qualitative. Nope, I was right, quantitative uh, information we're getting. So this is as many answers as we can get. Um, I would really appreciate it. And the reason I'm kind of advertising it here today is if everyone on the team could go through the survey for two reasons. One, that feedback would be really valuable to understand how we all think about it. Um, and it would be really great if everyone could kind of provide feedback on the survey. What is it like to do it? Is there any typos? I'm notorious for those, so I'd love those. Um, the two aspects that we're going to be working on is we're going to go internally. So the first thing we're going to do is ask, you know, our internal team as well as other people who have worked on the package registry before or have a, you know, technical connection to it to get their point on it. And then we're going to go out to our user base and our public and kind of ask them like, all right, given all of this information, what's important to you? Um, and then the second half, once we have the quantitative data, is we will take that data and um, go back to our users, again, internally and externally, and ask them some follow-up questions. This will be to help us understand. When you, everyone said that this was a really important job or task that you needed to complete, um, we're trying to break it apart and understand why it's so important, as well as get a read on how well we currently provide a solution for that task, um, which will help us in the long run, which is the overall goal, is to understand the maturity of the package offering inside of GitLab. Um, we recently went up a level, and so the UX team is taking an initiative to get some customer validation on that change. Um, so it's really exciting. That's the jobs to be done research that we keep talking about. All of that information will help us probably in the next Think Big when we can come back and say, these are all the important jobs for us to brainstorm You know, some quick wins to enable important jobs, as well as understand where we want to go after that. Any thoughts or questions about the research? Awesome. I take your resounding silence as this is all good. I, I had a question. Um, Sorry. I also have a question. Yes. <laughs> how, many how many people uh, or, and, and what types of people are we going to send the survey to? Definitely. Um, so we're going to try. So internally, we're thinking about, about 10 people, which is kind of small. Um, and that's just to get a sample set and kind of understand some patterns so that we can set up the quantitative, um, which will again probably be between five and 10 people that we end up talking to. In terms of the survey, it's really difficult sometimes to get a predictive number on how many we're going to get um, in terms of responses. And this survey is a little bit more technical as opposed to some other ones which are kind of simpler ideas. Um, so as many as we can get <laughs> in terms of the survey. And then between five and eight is usually a good number for qualitative interviews. Dan, do you want to vocalize your point? Sure. Um, how are we planning on sharing the survey results? Um, I'm always a little concerned we use external tools um, just because, you know, where does the data go and what does it look like and all that sort of stuff. So. For sure. Um, so we're using Qualtrics, which is the tool that the entire research team is using. Um, so we have some kind of standardization there. And then the information will be pulled into insights that are created inside of GitLab. So they're individual issues. Um, so all the information kind of stays inside of GitLab. And then when we want to relate to that or 
um, use that research insight as a reason for why we're doing making a choice. Um, it's there in the repository for us to use. And eventually I'll probably give a nice little presentation in Think Big so that we can get some highlights and nobody has to crawl through all of the insights that we'll end up writing. Thank you. Any other thoughts or questions before we move forward? When when do you plan on uh, sending it out? And when so when should we give when should we have our feedback in by? For sure. So what I would like to do is be able to get the survey by the end of the week to a position where we can do an internal round of review. Um, this could be someone like Darwin who might be an example. Um, and then probably a week, see how the data goes, make any adjustments to the survey based on what we hear in feedback. So if we constantly hear that one job is missing, for example, we'll update the survey and then by the following week we'll be public with it. That's my kind of goal. Um, surveys can kind of, you launch them and then you have to wait a while and they kind of trickle out and then you move on to the next one. So it might move faster if we get a lot of responses quickly. It could kind of tail out if it's a little slower. So we should all look at it this week before Friday. Uh, yeah, the sooner the better. Before Friday would be awesome. Um, it's not blocking, so we can move forward and I can always make adjustments as we go along. Um, but if by the end of the week, it would be really nice. Uh, I think with that, we'll move on to the next one, um, which is also my point. I'm just going to take up all the time I can. Um, we're going to do the super fun design review. Uh, I think everyone here has done this before, so I'm pretty excited to move through it quickly. Um, but just the high level is we're going to look at the design. I have a few minutes to talk about it, and then we're going to go turn by turn. Everyone's going to provide a piece of feedback. They can ask questions, stuff like that. We'll record it until the time is up. Um, Dan has my precious uh, counterpart, would you be willing to keep time for us and let me know when we're out of time? Because you always do so well at that and I am terrible at it. Awesome. So start the clock as soon as I share my screen. We'll be all set and ready. All right, can everybody see my screen? Should be a nice little container register UI. Awesome. So what I'm hoping to get feedback on today is the new UI for the container registry. Um, this is built off of the proof of concept and now working MRs that Nico had put together that involve moving the um, list of registries and sorry, list of repositories and the individual tags onto two different screens. Uh, this is all based on the user research that we did a few months ago now. Um, so the focus is kind of floating up the information that they need or is most relevant first and then allowing that detail view to kind of have some more. A uh, quick walkthrough of what it's like. Um, you come here to the container registry, you get this view. This would be you know, the image name. When you click on one of these, it would move you to a detail screen that would kind of tell you a little bit about this um, repository and what tags are involved in it. And then from there, if there's one tag in particular you wanna see the details of, you can click on this little box. This is a pattern we have for uh, merge requests and it'll expand and show you the details. I'm going to stop there, learn my lesson from last time, and uh, let Steve get volunteered to go first. Uh, let's see. Being first is, is tough. Um, I'm wondering, so the section where it shows like expiration enabled, expiration disabled, that seems to, like it kind of feels like it's a uh, like crowded in terms of just like you know big words um i don't really have any sort of suggestion as to how that might be um made better but it's just something i notice perfect um and then if we can when you're ready and wrapped up um, call out the next person so we can make sure to move yeah. very quickly. Uh, next person is, well, I got the wrong tab open. Haley. Okay, uh, let me get this back in the full screen. Or not. Um, yeah. Um, 
I think the main thing is when I look at um, at a container registry is I really like I want to know where the pull path is for the image, and that needs to be like that needs to be the first thing I see, really, because a lot of the times I find that I'm I'm using an image that I'm familiar with, and I just need the path again because I can't remember it. I'm not necessarily um, usually evaluating a new image. Gotcha. Um, and on to, oh my gosh, I did not have the doc open. I'm sorry. Um, on to Nico. Okay, so my piece of feedback will be that I'm not sure if the delete buttons are enabled or enabled, enabled or disabled in this state. And I'm not allowed to point, right? Okay, the one for the next. <clears throat> and over to Dan. Yeah, what I find difficult, I think it's just in the mock-up. It's because everything, we use the same line in the mock-up for each of the images and we didn't include labels in each of those lines it just looks like noise i like that it's compact because i personally like how compact it is but it's also just like how do i make sense of what's in this list um, i think in the mock-up i would have a better chance of understanding it if we'd made those lines different in some way so i could see how i could call out what was important from that list so that's probably the summary I'm not sure how to call out from the list beyond the top one what's important or anything. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, Nick's does. next. Go, Nick. So I guess my point is kind of similar to, to Haley's uh, in the sense that I was going to say that the copy button, I would probably want that to copy the like the pull command in its entirety. But I know from like GitLab, convention that that's probably going to be there only to copy the actual name of the repository um and i wonder if like if first of all if that's correct and then second of all if we should do something to change that um on to tim um i think for me that this design is aspirational right right i see because i see the verified in there and and um the labels I'm wondering if we should also then have something like whether or not it's passed a security scan and or something about uh, being able to like auto rebuild the image when the down upstream image has been rebuilt. So like are there other icons or features that we should call out as part of the design? Yeah, so I can respond to that pretty quickly. Um, what I had done is move that kind of information over to the tag. So for example, this one, and it's pretty subtle, it has this warning icon, and that would be um, either this image is, this tag is zero kilobytes, which is a pretty sure warning that something's wrong, or um, something from our security scan has popped up, and so it would show there, um, as well as kind of the labels and things. Does that address what you were saying? Yeah, except for the other one, which is like the auto rebuild. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, that, that could be something that we add in. Yeah, I'll take a look at that. And then on to Juan. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, a copy button for the image path would be useful as well. And I also miss uh, the information about, uh, for example, the latest tag that was built for one of the images, just so that we can have a, a view of the most active image on a repository. So that would be useful. On to David. Uh, yes, um, I was wondering here if we, if we, it would be useful to be able to select mutable images or tags and then delete them. For sure, that is something that um, I dropped from our current design and is, sorry, the current UI has that and I dropped that from the design. Um, I'll confirm it, but I, I'm not sure if a lot of people ended up using that. Um, but I'll confirm for sure. And I think we circle back up to Steve. I read correctly. Um, so on the, yeah, on the top page, um, isn't this a, a list of repositories? Um, 
not images? Or am I getting the lingos? I know I, I've confused the lingos many times. <laughs> I also have. I have had both of these on the design and gotten feedback that it's the other. So I will definitely investigate whether it should be Docker repository or image repository or images or what term is technically correct and resonates with our users. Cool. Haley? Maybe Ailey's not back yet. She will be right back in the chat. Gotcha. Uh, for speed's sake, let's go ahead and move to Nico and then we'll catch Ailey back up. Okay. So I'm not entirely sure what the registry setup button does. So that piece of UI is usually associated with a drop down with action. Um, so I'm not sure to what to expect from that because setup plus action on a drop down is not a pattern that uh, makes me understand immediately what, what is what. Gotcha. I'll look at that moment again. Uh, and I'm next. So the, uh, the other thing that uh, it's sort of in the same vein as I was talking about before, without any sort of color definitions in, I mean, I, I get that we have to understand people's ability to recognize color. Um, you know, obviously someone who has different sight abilities than I do may not perceive this the same way I would. But for me, it comes back to, again, identifying important information. Uh, and so I look at this and kind of go, it's all gray and there's a red thing on the side. So I know what the red thing does. It's a scary thing. Be careful with the red thing, but everything else is gray. So I don't really, not clear. I feel like we could use color to sort of describe things a little more easily. Age could be one thing, right? I'll leave it at that. Uh, and then Nick is next. So I'm not sure if this is a design thing or not, but when I look at this um, image here, it's hard to tell what decides the ordering of these images. Um, I assume it might be name, but they all share the same name, or it could be like uh, which image has received the newest tag, um, which may be more useful. I don't know. Um, or it could be any other like combination of ordering. So it could be like how many tags or when a tag was last verified, et cetera, et cetera. So I was wondering if we should make it obvious that they are ordered in this way because of N reason. Yeah, that's a really good call out. Thank you. Tim. Sorry. Uh, I was just thinking that like the most recently published tag looks very similar to the Docker repositories or what we have here as images. I wonder if we could visually distinguish that this is activity versus um, versus the repositories. Yeah, that's, I really agree with you there. It's hard to tell the difference between the two and it could probably clear it up a lot for sure. And then on to Juan. Probably instead of uh, having the label expiration enabled or expiration disabled, we could have the expiration deadline for an image if it is active or not. Uh, that's it, on to David. Um, I find it uh, disturbing to have a tax count on the index page uh, next to the container registry title. <clears throat> I would expect uh, an image count and perhaps a tax count, but at least an image count first. And then back to the top. Um, yeah. Two um, quick things. So on the tagged page, I do really like those details below the tag, like um, like the published to and verified by, and um, when it will expire. Um, I really like that section. Is that something that would just accordion out as you select any given tag? Is that sort of the idea there? Exactly. Um, and then eventually what would happen is when we get enough details, that accordion would then move over <coughs> to kind of an individual page. This is that middle ground as we iterate there. Okay. 
And then the one other thing is, so on the tag detail page, we use um, those two tabs, very similar to issues and um, merge requests where it's got all tags and verified tags. What do you think about using those same sorts of tabs on the um, other page where it's um, like, instead of having the most recently published tag, just as a single one-off thing at the top, there would be maybe a tab for recently published tags. And then there's like, you know, a running list of the most recent ones. Yeah, that's a cool idea. Uh, Haley, have you made it back? I have made it back. Yay. Yeah, so let's see. Uh, so on the first one, uh, one and a half minutes remaining, just so everyone knows. Yeah. Um, I I don't see anything really besides what I've said. Um, you can pass on a turn if yeah, you pass. don't have any feedback. Mm, go. Okay, so I think uh, we'll be expecting to have sorting on the uh, Docker repositories list as well, not just on the tags part, especially when I am on the group level. And over to them. Uh, are we do? Are we going to have paging on the uh, list? Because that's already off the bottom of the mark. So. Uh, I was planning on having pagination, yeah, when you cross that, that threshold. Uh, and then if it's paging based on the tabs that tab idea that Steve had, then we would have um, some weirdness, I think, possibly. Um, different paging for different tabs with different ordering. But yeah, I think paging That's a good call out. Um, go, Nick. Uh, on the second image, or the second screen, the detail screen, um, now this might just me, be me, but I'm finding it hard to figure out or at a glance understand what the um, tags beta, master, and canary are referring to, like what they actually are. So master, for example, could be the master branch, which is what it appears to be when you look at the details bit underneath it. But they're all sort of the same thing and highlighted in the same way. So it's just unclear to me visually like what these things represent. And that's time, if hadn't, people hadn't heard my uh, timer going off. That was perfect. Thank you, team. This was so efficient. I think we broke our record. Um, that is all really, really powerful feedback. Um, so I appreciate it. I will, of course, do the next step, turn it all into discussions or iterations if they're pretty straightforward. And then we'll follow up on conversations that we need to have there. Uh, uh, thank you all so much again. Sorry, Haley, could you mute, please? Your keyboard is super loud or mouse or whatever it was. Thanks. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. No worries at all. Thank you all so very much. Thank you, Dan, for being an excellent timer. I always appreciate it because I never pay attention to the time and I should. Um, and with that, I will hand it over to Steve, who I think has the next item. Yeah, so uh, this last week, um, so one of the, the bug in the container expiration policies raised um, the issue that um, the users that are creating or updating these retention policies uh, in the MVC, those aren't, it's not something that's getting tracked. Um, and that, that's kind of what created this little bug. And so um, I've created a follow up to start tracking uh, users for retention policies and kind of go down that path. But that sort of sparked a conversation of, um, you know, this could be useful in other areas too, perhaps, or, you know, as this gets built out, how can this be helpful for, you know, admin users of an entire instance? And um, like, what would that look and feel like? <clears throat> and so some of the questions I pose are just, you know, where else should we have this type of auditing and traceability um, within package? And, what might an admin view look like if an admin user wanted to see, for example, you know, all of the users that have 
recently set retention policies on you know a group or on a, a single repository or if one person like overrode a project uh, policy with a repository policy um, and then also in that same realm of sort of admin items you know how can admin users be notified of various events occurring so notifying an admin user perhaps anytime policy is updated or maybe an admin user wants to be notified anytime a um, package or image is published with a specific tag um, and so that was just sort of something that came up this week that I thought worked well in the think big um, brainstorming sort of idea set so curious to hear if anyone has any ideas around all of that I'm just going to add the side note that we we have UI tracking, so we have the save and cancel button on the setting forms. We should have those, I think, already on production, even though it's just probably me, Steve, <laughs> and, and team clicking those on that single project that, as it enabled. And then the reason why I'm saying is maybe um, the UI tracking can help us um, identify a path forward of other things that we can track regarding this, just to on the conversation. I know that now that it is scarce, but maybe in the future it could be helpful. Do we have any sort of generalized auditing methodology across the product? Well, there are some tracking guidelines. Um, I, I'm can aware we, of most of the Can we call it auditing them. instead of tracking? <laughs> like tracking just has this connotation of like we're following you around auditing has the connotation of like okay some action was taken we want to figure out who took that action and why i want to go like retroactively go check that out i think it's an important distinction i don't think we're tracking people and i don't think we should yeah. use that terminology i'm just uh, using the terminology because it's how we call it in the call the function <laughs> simply as that <laughs> but yeah inside is an event so maybe i don't know <laughs> we should update those yeah, I'm, a, I'm unaware of like specific um, tools or methodologies for, for specifically auditing against user usage. Um, like I, I have seen a lot of like event tracking modules and things that's kind of what we use for, for metrics, but this is sort of a, a different um, sort of setup. I don't know if anyone else has noticed any other teams doing things like this. Um, Nick and I were talking yesterday about the idea of an activity feed or a dashboard for our stage where you could see like things that have recently been happening. And I, I think being able to say, Tim published NPM package XYZ at this time would be really valuable. And, and maybe we can make that a smaller iteration by focusing it on admin to start. Uh, and being able to say like, okay, from an admin point of view, what's happening and, and really what we care about is maybe destructive actions. Like you deleted a Docker repository, you deleted a, a, an image that was, you know, named master or release or something like that. Um, just giving them some ideas around that. Yeah, this, this, uh, this event tracking thing that, that you shared, sorry, uh, Tim, before I move on, did, did anyone want to follow up with Tim's comment before I go back to just commenting on the auditing question? Sorry, Tim, I didn't mean to cut that off. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, I like the idea of an activity feed, something really basic to start with that we can um, implement, Tim. So I feel like that's a good idea because it will, um, it doesn't look like the event tracking is aligned with this. So, um, you know, I feel like um, this could be a good place for us to just start implementing it. Um, Sorry to, Interrupt, but isn't event tracking and auditing two completely and unrelated things? Like yes. in my head, they're not even remotely similar. Like event tracking is, uh, in my head, just tracking what a user is doing because you want to know how many users are performing action Y. Mm -hmm. Whereas auditing is a log 
of events that has happened occurred on the system that you want to be able to retroactively look at so you can identify when certain things have happened and perhaps by who you know you want to audit what's going on on your system to figure out the source of problems or, or changes or, or whatever else so i think they have two completely different goals and, and therefore two completely different things entirely that are completely unrelated well yeah, I, I think I, I think that reason sorry go ahead nico i've said a bit here no i just i just wanted to say that probably the conversation start because i i mixed up the two um trying to entwine in, in the two well, I think, and I think what happens is uh, when you start tracking, depending on how you're tracking. Now, I think tracking is a bit of a touchy subject for GitLab. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just didn't, memories, memories. Um, so, we, you know, I think we ought to be careful about anything we're talking about with tracking. Now, if we want to make a distinction, I'd argue that distinction should be that tracking is anything that is um, aggregated. Um, and not PII, right? Like PII. It's not identifying a specific user that took an action. We're recording generally what stuff is used. Whereas auditing um, can overlap into that, right? Um, depending on how you track the information or what information you're storing. Um, auditing for me is the ability to understand who took what action. And it's particularly around uh, permissions. And I think we'll find as we start getting um, uh, uh, different types of customers and some of our enterprise customers, they're going to care about this stuff. We've definitely been at different organizations where uh, this auditing, uh, I, I don't want to, I'm just trying to obfuscate this as much as I can and still make a useful point. Um, had situations where actions were taken by team members uh, from, this is not at GitLab, um, and those actions were not permitted. They were being done to cover up behavior that was not what supposed to be taken. Uh, it was bad, some might say. <laughs> um, and then the auditing functionality in that particular software provided that, that customer the ability to say, instead of talking to um, this organization that I worked for and saying, you have a bug, the conversation was, no, we have auditing, here it is, this action he was actually taken by a user of your company, right? So um, auditing is that type of capability. Um, and it's something that we provide to customers as a tool um, so that they can understand who's doing what with the permissions that have been granted. Does that seem like a fair distinction to people? I'm going to stop ranting about it now, by the way. Yes, how that makes sense to me. Yeah. Is it challenging to, to add this level of auditing to, um, to different features? Like, should we be is it a high level of effort or is it something that, oh, now we have the framework for it, we could, we could do it fairly easily? I think that'll take a little research. Um, like I just pasted, I discovered there is some sort of an audit event um, module that exists for things like this. Um, I have not run into that before, so I'm not sure how it's being used or if it's something that we can uh use within the package stage but if it is that might um greatly like increase the the ease of effort um because we don't have to build our own module um so it'll, it'll just take a little research i think if we had to do it from scratch it's a, it's a fair amount of work does it does it make sense to create an issue to sort of start working through where we think that the, the highest value additions for auditing and tracking come in for the stage. Um, it, it, there's two approaches in my view. One, we could say, well, we're already here and we're already thinking about it when we add the ability to sort of audit this sort of behavior, let's just add it and that can be our first point of contact. And the other approach we can take is to say, what for our users are the most important um, actions to be audited or that they may want to audit within our set of categories. I think that does make sense. Um, I really like the idea of starting it as like a maybe we can cut as some kind of feed where we could show activity and then it so it can serve dual purposes. So it could show like activity that's happening, but you could also go back and look at specifically events and, and tie them back to something that's happened. Um, I could I, I could open that issue.
it looks to me like audit events and activity feed could be two different things as well. Um, your audit events, according to that document that Steve linked, I think is uh, just mainly for administrators or people that are running the GitLab system, I guess, and are probably going to go through logs and that kind of thing. Whereas an activity feed might be, you could argue an activity feed is for the wider user base in the sense that it's not just for administrators, it's for users of the project or group or whatever as well. They might want to see that activity feed and the things that are in it. Yeah, that makes sense. But is it the, is the same information required for both? Like you would basically say user X did action Y for, for each? I imagine, yeah, I imagine the information is going to be pretty similar. But um, just how it's presented would be different. And, and also like the, how it's persisted throughout time. Like an activity feed, you probably don't need to keep all historical data, but for an audit log, you probably do. Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, you might be able to, I don't know, depending on how accessible the audit data is, you might be able to build an activity feed off of that data. Okay. But yeah, I wouldn't know for sure, obviously. I will open one or two issues <laughs> to, to talk through it. And I think, I think, does it make sense to start with destructive actions then, like deleting a repository or deleting a, an, an image or something like that, or updating the uh, retention policy? Yeah, I would think destruction is probably the most, like the thing that most would be, like most people would wanna see, but also creation um, might be something. Um, so like if I create, an image and I call it latest um, overwriting, you know, the last latest version, that might be something that an admin person might want to know about or a, a wider user would want to know about. That makes sense well, too. Well, and that's kind of why I'm trying to make the distinction I am. I think we don't want to make decisions about what's important to our customers without sort of determining what's important for our customers. So like this yeah. feels like a feature to me, like something we provide to customers to help them better understand what's been going on. So if we're going to sort of say, let's start somewhere, which I'm totally in favor of, let's just start with the easiest thing that we can do um, in, you know, if it happens to be this, action of creating a retention policy because we're currently working on it. Um, it might be a simple iteration because we're already in the code. Um, but then actually figuring out what, what our customers want to track is a whole, I would say an effort that's probably more in your hands, Ian and, and Tim. Um, I'm not trying to palm it off on you, obviously. I'm just sort of saying like, we need to figure out what's important before we go spending a bunch of energy on. on no, yeah, well, well, that's what I, we'll create the issue and then we'll get feedback on the issue and, and we can go from there. Would it make sense to attach um, like email notification to this kind of audits or like parallel to it, like saying um, this X image are being deleted from the system or even better, like in two days, this 50, tags are going to be deleted. So you have time to react if something is about to happen or even just as a report too. Do you think that would be useful for you? Do you like getting e emails from GitLab? Well, um, I, do, I do get plenty of emails from NPM, for example. <laughs> and I think it will be useful. <laughs> yeah, from GitLab is a lot of emails already. <laughs> Just to throw out the like UXer in me from the research that I've done on package, which has nothing to do with notifications. I heard several times they do not want any more emails. So something to keep in mind. I'm sure others uh, in this virtual room can probably relate to the idea. I do think a little bit about um, like systems like Sentry that does air tracking, how you can, you can subscribe um, to get emails based on specific errors that come into Sentry. So maybe that could be like something where, you know, like a, an admin user can like have preferences of like, I only want emails for if this thing's going to be deleted or, you know, like those types of options might be available um, to help is, customize their experience. Does this, that is as a model we generally follow at GitLab, like to email customers when stuff's going to happen. Like um, I, 
I would think maybe we put it in notifications or to do or something like that more than we'd put it in an email. Um, and maybe I'm just projecting what I like to do because I just like getting a billion emails on random things that aren't actionable. It has to be actionable as far as I'm concerned, otherwise I'm not interested. Um, but yeah, different points of view are totes valid here, I would say. Um, and we just, uh, we stopped the note taking. Can someone, the peeps get in and, and sort of update some notes here? We, we lost a bit of track there while we were talking about. I want to make sure we're capturing it as best as we can. Thanks. Uh, so action item out of this, Tim, you said you were going to create a couple of issues to discuss for concepts, I think. Yeah, exactly. For one, cool. yeah, one for audit and one for just like activity. Cool. Thank you. I think on to Ian for the, the last point on the agenda. Perfect. I need to be better about jumping in there sometimes. Um, I wanted to share with everyone just exciting news as well as an FYI. Um, one of the ideas that's being kicked around is the new cross-stage think big, which is a lot of what we've been doing here at Package, but to try to solve um, the cross-stage issue. So a little bit of background. Um, in our most recent SUS survey, which was the service usability score, um, one of the pieces of feedback we got from our users trying to utilize GitLab as a whole, so this is the entire product, is that the cross-stage experiences are a little rough, um, and a few times the um, CI specifically was called out. And so what we're trying to do is find ways for the PM and UX team to work together to create a better, more robust experience instead of what's kind of currently happening, which is the siloed effect that we have where like package has got really good experience and release has really good experience, but the two don't touch very well. Um, it's probably going to be focused on the UX and PM as opposed to bringing in the larger like uh, developers and marketing teams, at least at first, um, just to make sure it's manageable and, and we're not just sitting there in an idle conversation. Um, but what I was wondering, and we have just a couple of minutes, if anybody had any thoughts as we've done these think bigs about things that were successful and that we should move into this larger um, cross stage idea to make sure it works really well or things that maybe haven't gone well and are think bigs that we should avoid in this, this new initiative. I think one thing that's gone well is when people create issues and or have a, and or have examples to go along with their thought. I've noticed a couple of times I've been like, we should do this, and it it's not as helpful as say when someone's like, oh, here's an issue, and um, I think that's really helpful. And then any pre-reading of the material is also I, I've found to be helpful as well. Um, Ian, do you? Do you have a plan to keep the discussion focused because you are like increasing the size of the target by much like this and even with just with our stage we tend to move left and right a lot so you probably will need to have like some sort of a, like strong rules to keep the discussion on focus yes uh we are going to try what we did at one of our first think bigs which is that the uxers will spend 10 minutes presenting research data that we've gathered from our users specific to how the cross-stage experience has been um, less than ideal. One of the examples that I was going to bring to the table is that users are expecting when a pipeline builds a package or builds an image and puts it in the repository that that pipeline view is updated to show that um, delivery, similar to artifacts. Um, and so we're hoping that by presenting a bunch of research around specific problem areas that we've discovered from our users, we, the PMs and the UX team can kind of um, brainstorm around how we can solve those different issues with the idea that we're going to try to keep it light and turn them into issues and the issues is where the deep discussion goes in um, but because that cross-stage uh, opportunity isn't always there this is kind of the, our, our way to kick that off but that's definitely a concern about runaway conversations that don't end up being very helpful Steve, do you want to say what you're typing? 
Yeah, so um, like really just kind of being conscious of, of when like the differences between brainstorming and like just speculating. And so when you start just speculating on like what users might need, then that's kind of an indicator of like, you know, the brainstorming has kind of completed and now it's time to create an issue to start validating those ideas. And um, like we certainly oftentimes, you know, veer into the speculation side um, on accident, but I think, you know, with a new or bigger group that could happen very quickly. Um, Dan has been great at identifying and, and stopping us from getting too far into that. So um, just, you know, being aware of that with new group would be good. Yeah, that's a good call out. One of the things we're going to do at the beginning of the meeting is say, to walk out of this, our goal is that the PM team will walk out with new feature ideas and build the issues. And the design team will recognize those exact uh, gaps in knowledge and turn those into research issues and initiate that problem validation. So hopefully every part of the conversation will either end up an issue with you know, features into the product or discovery where we need to learn more. And then my, my comment was like, I'm understanding the people within the actual meeting should be able to help you uh, like determine where that person can actually contribute. And so if like in the context of this meeting, because we're focused around our stage, you can have everyone from the stage within these meetings and we could all contribute, understand, get value, understand like going forward, how we're even implementing code or doing whatever workflow. We could all take something from this conversation and it's valuable giving people context. When you start going beyond groups, the overlap is different. And so that Venn diagram of people's uh, areas of expertise and the value they can gain from the meeting is gonna be really different. So if, if, it's, if you're not really sure what value it is for someone to be in the meeting, they can often, that can be an area of getting sidetracked because you won't even realize until they ask start asking questions that you kind of either can't answer or seem sort of orthogonal to what, orthogonal, sorry, to what is actually going on. Um, so that would be my big suggestion there we get a lot more uh, flexibility because we're all in the same stage. So like no question is a bad question in the stage, but if you're talking about like some very specific areas in this broader group, it could be like, hey, this is just not something we need to talk about, right? And that's one of the red flags that we're gonna watch out for for the first session, assuming we do it, um, is are the right people who are involved in the conversation here and are people who are here, was it not valuable for them? Because um, of exactly your concern. They're, here we are all overlapped on the exact same thing versus across stage, that's not the case anymore. That's a good call out, thank you. Yeah, I think our biggest risk is we just start chatting and having laughs together, and which is a great problem to have for a group, but like it's not super valuable in terms of the use of our synchronous time, right? Mm -hmm. as, as a broader group, I think it's actually still valuable for us because it's still fun and we all enjoy it, but right. Perfect. Uh, we have two minutes left. Does anybody have any last thoughts or? Um, does the, do you need a t-shirt? I'm not sure vintage. now um, because uh, maybe, I'm not sure. Nico has uh, hesitations. <laughs> I'll, I'll let him bring them up if he wants to. Uh, yeah, I demanded to see <laughs> proof of the Italian heritage and they didn't provide any, so. There is zero Italian heritage in, in this body. So I don't know if I can qualify anymore. All That's right. Okay. I give you my blessing, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Then yes, Dan, I think that means I need a t-shirt. You just print the issue number on it and the project fits in. <laughs> and people are like, what is that issue? Tap, 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 godfather of think big. <laughs> don't ask me about my business. <laughs> That's <laughs> All right, we are at time. Um, so thank you, everyone. The feedback was really helpful. We got conversation design. Steve, thank you for bringing that forward. And uh, lastly, thank you for the feedback around our think bigs and, and how to think about them moving forward. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.